Welcome to Worship at Holy Spirit Lutheran Church in West Bloomfield, Michigan. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. We begin with our litany of confession and assurance. Ten lamps gathered with oil enough for all. Ten lamps gathered. But five are showing careless disregard. Ten lamps gather. Five blaze with oil abundant enough to share. Ten lamps gather. Five lifeness, lifeless when laziness and greed collide. Ten lamps gather. How many will burn tonight? Creator God, giver of oil, hear us as we pray for generous hearts to share oil with our neighbors. Creator God, giver of oil, hear us as we pray for the vision necessary to leave our comfortable seats in search of oil. Creator God, giver of oil, hear us when we pray for forgiveness for the ways our selfishness and our apathy collide. Ten lamps gather with oil enough for all. Come, children of God, into a sacred circle where sharing creates abundance and no one leaves hungry. Amen. Please join in singing of our very first hymn, O God, our help in ages past. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We join together in our hymn of praise, The Feast is Ready. first reading for this day is from Amos chapter 5. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion, 
and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and it was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals. I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grained offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Word of God word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel acclamation is, what a mighty word God gives. The Holy Gospel is according to Matthew, chapter 25. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five of them were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they did not take any extra oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and they slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, there is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were already with him went into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day or the hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Recently, I happened upon an old top 10 list from David Letterman, and it's things to say if you're caught sleeping at your desk at work. For example, number 10, they told me at the blood bank this might happen. Number five, darn, why did you interrupt me? I I almost had figured out a solution to our biggest problem. Number one, in the name of Jesus, amen. In our parable today that Jesus told about the bridesmaids, some of them had excuses also. The bridegroom was late. We misjudged how much oil the lamps would take. Lamps are defective. The other maidens won't share. So what's up with this story? about the bridesmaids and the bridegroom. Well, to better understand it, we have to understand what a Jewish wedding was like in the first century. You know, Eastern and Western cultures are much different in how weddings take place. In the Eastern culture, the bridegroom is often more important or a more important figure than the bride. Frequently, the bridegroom paid for all the wedding expenses. There were three parts to a Jewish wedding. First was the formal 
engagement, which was almost always arranged by the parents of the bride and the groom. Second, later, up to a year or more, there was the official religious ceremony at the bride's home. And finally, the third, the wedding banquet, generally at night, at the house of the groom. It lasted seven days and could take place right after the ceremony or weeks later. The female friends of the bride, at least 10 of them, would wait outside her house for the coming of the bridegroom. And the bridegroom would come from his house, take the bride, back from her house to his. Now this involved great festivity and they walked through the streets often taking the long way so that everyone could bless them. These bridesmaids were very important. They waited outside the house even at night for that's when the groom normally arrived. So they'd often use torches so they could tell the bride that the groom had arrived and then escort them through the streets with these lighted torches. And they went back to the groom's house and inside where they'd be locked away for the joyous celebration. Now often someone would go before the groom and announce he was on his way, but even then it could be a while. So the women had to be ready, prepared. In our story today, some of these bridesmaids, of course, were ready. They were wise, they had extra oil. Then there were the unwise, the foolish ones who hadn't thought about that. And when the bridegroom arrives suddenly, they're not ready. And they asked the other five, the wise ones, to loan them some oil, but they refuse. Why? It would throw the entire wedding procession into disarray for lack of oil. So the five who were unprepared rush off to find oil, but when they get back to the groom's house, it's too late. The door's been shut, they weren't ready, and they missed out on this celebration. The story really has more to do about being ready for the coming of our Lord. You know, we're getting very near to the end of our Christian year. Two weeks after today is the final Sunday in this year, church year. November 29th is the first Sunday in Advent, a brand new year in the church. The last weeks of the Christian church year always speak about being ready, as do the first weeks of Advent. The foolish bridesmaid's lack of oil demonstrates an uncaring attitude toward the marriage feast, which is the kingdom of God. There's a story about a tourist who was traveling along the shores of Lake Como in northern Italy. He saw this beautiful castle, and when he reached it, there was a friendly old gardener who opened the gate and showed him the ground that he kept in perfect order. The tourist asked the man, when was the last time your master was here? Twelve years ago, the old man said. Well, does he ever write to you? No. Where do you get your instructions? From his agent in Milan. Does he come, the agent? Never. So who comes here? And the old man said, well, most often I'm alone. But sometimes tourists like yourself will stop. But you keep this garden in such fine condition as if you were expecting your master to return tomorrow. And the old gardener replied, No, I keep it in such condition as if my master would return today. So when we think about this story, this parable Jesus told, will we be like that gardener who's prepared for his master's return the wise bridesmaids who had prepared with extra oil, or those who have excuses, fall asleep, and are blocked out of the kingdom because we are not ready. Are we ready? Are we prepared? 
Let us pray. To God, you tell us in your word that you will return and we are to be ready. Not to be afraid, not to worry, but always be ready like that gardener and those wives, bridesmaids. Dear God, as you help us through our days, we pray that we would understand that and listen to your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in our hymn of the day, Rejoice, Rejoice Believers. Together, we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our prayers and your response is your mercy is great. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you've made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, artists, whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land, in the hearts of those who guard the law, those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Companion, console all who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or struggle with their identity and place in this world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. 
Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives. Inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until the day when you gather all creation around the throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. This is based on Matthew 25 our scripture for today. In the presence of the Lord, we have reflected on his words about the wisdom of vigilance. What are we, foolish or wise? Probably a bit of the two. Foolish when we sin, wise when we're vigilant, and try to live a bit like Jesus, and to put his words into practice. May Almighty God keep you vigilant and wise, and bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in our closing hymn, Blessed Assurance. Mm -hmm. 